Good morning, dear students. Today we're going to take our first poem, which is entitled Great, Wide, Beautiful, Wonderful World by W.B. Rands. So, who is William Brighty Rands? He was a nursery headmaster who wrote sometimes under a pen name, which is a fake name, not his real name. After a great struggle in life, he became a reporter in the House of Commons in England. He was specially known for his poems and fairy tales for children. Here is the poem. Great, wide, beautiful, wonderful world, with the wonderful water around you curled. And the wonderful grass on your breast. World, you are beautifully dressed. Ah, you are so great and I'm so small. I tremble to think of you, word, at all. And yet, when I said my prayers today, a whisper inside me seemed to say, You are more than earth, though you are such a dot. You can love and think. And the earth cannot. So, let's get to know the meaning of each vocabulary. Great, large and big. Wide, big or extensive. Curled, wrapped around. Breast, heart. Tremble, shake with anxiety. Dot, very small point. Now we're going to go through the paraphrase. What is the paraphrase? It's like an explanation for the poem. Here, the poet marvels at the greatness and the beauty of the world and says that it's wonderful with all its blue seas, oceans and green grass on its surface. He sums up the beauty of the word, saying that it's beautifully dressed. The word is so big and extensive compared with the poet that he trembles when he thinks of it. But yet, deep inside the poet's heart, a voice, possibly his spirit, tells him that even though he may be small compared with the size of the word, he is more important that it because man can think and love and the words cannot. God has created man to be the most important creature in life. Now the literary terms or figures of speech. Number one we have personification. What's personification? It's the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristics of something non-human or the representation of an abstract quality in human form. Letter A. And the wonderful grass on your breast. The word is personified as a person who has heart. Letter B. Word, you are beautifully dressed. The word is personified as a person who is beautifully dressed. Number two, contrast. What is the meaning of contrast? It's to compare in order to show unlikeness or differences between two things. Like we have here, you are more than earth, though you are such a dot. More than earth and a dot. Can you see the difference between the two things? You can love and think, and the earth cannot. Can and cannot. Alliteration. What's alliteration? It's the repetition of the first sound in the same line. The repetition of the first sound. And focus here, I said sound, not letter. The same sound in many words or in more than one word in the same line. Like we have here in letter A. In line 2 we read, 
with the wonderful water. Can you see the repetition of the wa sound in with, wonderful, and water? Letter B. In the line 6 we read, tremble to think, tremble and to think, two, tremble and two, the t sound. Letter C. In line 8 we read, whisper inside me seemed to say, the s sound in seemed and to say. Rhyme scheme. Great, wide, beautiful, wonderful word by W. B. Rand consists of ten lines with a rhyme scheme of A A B B C C D D and E E. Commentary. In the seventh line of the poem, there is a change of idea. In the first six lines, the poet expresses his great marvelling at the greatness of the beauty of the word and says that even though man is so small, comparing him to the big word, he is more important than it, because he can love and think, and the word cannot. God has created man to be the most important thing and creature in life. The main idea. The main idea in the poem is that man is so small compared with the earth in size. He is more important than the earth as he can love and think and the earth cannot. God has created man to be the most important thing and creature in life. Thank you for watching.